Okay, so far, those of you who are tuning in on YouTube, uh, you have missed an incredible, uh, exciting entry of the implosion of Eddie Dunn into my life. And so we are going to be talking today. The lesson today is about all those ugly gifts, those gifts that come in ugly wrapping paper, that when you look at them, you find purpose and you find meaning. So today's broadcast, today's class, is how to go from hopeless to, or homeless to hopeful, or helpless to hopeful. So there's so many different ways that you can, and I'm sure there's gonna be lots of gifts and lessons wrapped up into this class. And so I hope that you are fastening your seatbelt because we're gonna learn and grow together. Let's hit it and everybody dance. Let's get it out of our system. Here we go. The Lillian McDermott Show. We love, we fear. Bridges we burn. We make mistakes. Then we live and learn. When life gets tough. And it seems like your best ain't good enough. If you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here. Right here, and when you need a friend, you can count on me. I'll be right here, right here, waiting for you. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friends. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful best day ever. And for those of you who have been tuning into the classroom since 2011, or maybe just tuned in yesterday for the first time, welcome back. But if this is the first time that you have tuned in to the Lillian McDermott Radio Show classroom, please know I've been waiting for you. This is a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is, my, it, is, it is my purpose to provide alternative ways to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening and viewing friends at facebook.com forward slash Lillian's radio show, will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Now, I talk about living the life of your dreams, but there are going to be times in life and in, in our journey that we're not going to want to relive that life ever, ever again. There are times in our lives that we are faced with decisions, paths, and we choose one road versus the other. Either road, people ask me this as a life coach all the time, how do I know I made the right choice? And the answer is simple, because you chose it whatever it is that you chose for yourself. Now, here's the trick and here's the deal. It is our responsibility. When I use the word responsibility, I mean ownership, empowerment, freedom, to figure out why. why what is the beauty? What did I learn? What are the gifts and lessons from taking this path? And if this path isn't working for you, it's time to find another path. But at least you have the experience and the growth. And so with all of us, including Willie Baronet, Eddie Dunn, and myself, and all of you who are watching or listening later on on podcasts, you could probably say, yeah, I know, I've been there, I've taken those turns, and maybe I'm ashamed of it, or maybe I'm uncomfortable with it, I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to look at it again. Maybe that's how you feel. But today we're going to look at what it's like to be homeless, hopeless, and taking that turn and seeing the, the gift and the lessons and the beauty and moving towards hopefulness. And so um, I asked Willie Baronet, last time Willie was in the classroom, he talked about Eddie Dunn. And I said, I've got to meet this guy. I want to have him on. And let's, let's really dive into the uncomfortable feeling that homelessness brings out on every single one of us in different levels. For Willie, it was totally different. And again, those gifts and lessons created the path 
that he's taken today. It, it's a beautiful journey, Willie, and I'm just really grateful that Willie not only is back, but he's also bringing Eddie Dunn, who has lived this homelessness. And because Willie was willing to face his fears, it's taken him down a path full of gifts and lessons. And since it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge, I am grateful that Willie Baronet, Eddie Dunn are here to do just that. Welcome guys to the Lillian McDermott hey. Radio Show classroom. Nice to meet you, Lillian. Nice, nice to meet to you. Here. Nice to meet you too. So we're gonna start with, um, with Willie. So that all of us who are turning in, tuning in for the first time and learning about you, Willie, um, learn a little bit about your discomfort and your path that took you from being uh, uncomfortable to curious, a seeker. And that's created such a beautiful journey for you. Share a little bit about your background and what led you to Eddie Dunn. So uh, I've got a project that I've been working on now for 26 years. In 1993, I started buying and collecting signs from people on the street. And it had started kind of like what you said, from a place of feeling awkward, uncomfortable, didn't really want to make eye contact sometimes. And for me, this became a way to get into a conversation, to make this human connection with this person. And so I started buying signs. And for 15 years or so, I just bought signs without really knowing what was going to happen with all of these signs. And I went to grad school in 2008, and I started to take these signs as a potential art project seriously. And that led me to starting to do art installations using the signs, which led me to talking about the project. And that led me eventually in 2014 to traveling across the country. We, uh, me and a film crew started in uh, Seattle and in 31 days traveled all the way to New York City, buying signs and interviewing folks along the way. And when I was in Philadelphia, which was late in July in 2014, uh, the Philly Inquirer was following us around doing a story about this project. And one of the men that I met uh, and whose sign I bought was Eddie's. And Eddie had a very unique sign because, um, you know, a lot of signs are fairly straightforward. Help, I'm hungry, need work, etc. Eddie's sign said, and Eddie, correct me if I'm wrong, but it said something to ponder. What if God occasionally visits Earth disguised as a homeless person, checking to see how charitable we are? Completely hypothetical, of course. And I could tell from the sign that... Uh, been hanging up. <laughs> I'm saying I have, a, I have that, that one hanging up, so oh. uh, I was checking. <laughs> he took his sign back. <laughs> Actually, that's a poster that has the sign on it. No, um, no, it's a poster of the, of the sign. So go ahead, Willie. And so uh, Eddie and I met in this very brief encounter where I bought his sign, and he was actually interviewed as well by the Philly Inquirer, and you know, two years went by or almost two years. And I happened to be speaking about this project. And I had a photo of myself um, talking about the project. And behind me was a picture of Eddie's sign. And I posted that photograph on Facebook. And lo and behold, I get a message out of nowhere from a man named Eddie Dunn in Philadelphia. And that began a new aspect to our relationship. Uh, he wrote me, we reconnected. Uh, he shared a little bit more about his story. And it just so happened I was going back to Philly to do another art show. Yeah. And when I was there, Eddie and I met and we had lunch and talked for four hours. And he got to see his sign on the wall at this group art show that was happening in Philadelphia. And from that point, Eddie and I have stayed connected and have been involved in a number of awareness raising events and have been on panels together. 
And now we're doing a radio show together. Here we go. Here we go. Yep. And Here we are. So, Here we are. Eddie, thank you so much for coming on. I know that it's getting started is, is probably the first step seems the craziest, but once you take that first step, the next step is a little bit easier. So share a little bit about your background and what led you to that moment when you met Willie. Um, I am from the um, Kensington section of Philadelphia. Um, it's kind of like the hub of the opiate crisis here in on the East Coast. And I uh, I grew up I grew, I grew up in Kensington. I struggled with a, a a heroin addiction off and on since I was since I was like eighteen or nineteen, and had experienced bouts of homelessness here and there. As a result of it, um, you know, along with other consequences, but um, uh, in, in the summer of from from the winter to the summer of 2014, I had started to experience the uh, longest bout of uh, homelessness that I that I um, that I'd ever encountered, and you know, I in July of 2014, I was in you know, I was in Center City. At that point, I was living under a highway, and I was at I was at 10th and Market in Philadelphia, and I saw I saw what appeared to be a, a, a film crew, and you know, guy with a microphone hanging. I thought it was like a a mirage, and you know, Willie had approached me with some people and asked if um, you know, if I wanted to sell my sign, and I said, sure, sure, I'll sell the sign. And he said, how much do you want for it? I said, forty dollars. He Whoa. said, will you take? He said, will you take twenty? I said, absolutely. <laughs> and you know little did i know like that was the um it was our uh oh here we go here we go what they call flying a sign what the uh what the homeless in philadelphia referred to as um you know panhandling with a with a sign yeah and, and so you got twenty dollars for your sign twenty dollars it's correct yeah but you wanted forty that's, One at forty. Yeah. yeah, my negotiation skills in that condition weren't very, weren't weren't very good. <laughs> yeah. No, so I um, yeah. No, I said so. That's you know that was the first time Willie and I had met. So, you know, in November of two thousand fourteen, I had gotten clean, and I've been clean since then. But during the course of the time that I've been that I've been clean, I you know I. I knew about the article. There was an article um, in um, on uh, uh, Philly.com, I believe it was. Somebody had showed me the article, resulting from our encounter. That um, you know that that they did a they did a story on Willie, and they mentioned me in the article, mm -hmm. and I I found the article. And I decided at some point I said, hey, you know what, Willie Baronet, that's not the most common name. So I looked him up on Facebook, and sure enough, he was um, he was doing uh, a I believe it was a TED talk, and I didn't know that, but I just saw him at a podium, and I was like, "That's him!" And I looked in the background, and you know, "Blown Up" was my sign. Wow, that was my sign in the background, and so. that was truly a sign. So you you skipped over in 2014. How did you get clean? Because I know heroin is a very difficult addiction. I happen to um, have somebody who very much who has been dealing with a heroin addiction for a lot of lo most of her life or her adult life. Yeah. And so I just would love for you to share with anybody who feels that fear that comes from addiction. How well, you, you know, you, you mentioned, um, you know, everybody has a path. How do you know the path? Um, you know, how do you know, to, how do you know it was the right decision? You made it. Everything's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually not, I, I have, I, I don't have any, um, how can I put this? If, if I had an opportunity to go back and change my life, um, I wouldn't, I, I really wouldn't. I'm glad that I experienced, um, you know, the addiction. I'm glad I experienced the homelessness because it propelled me um, to be willing to make changes that I would normally have not been able to make due to, you know, my own ego. I think ego is like the hugest stumbling block for a human being. And the one thing about an addiction is it's, it's, it crushes the ego and it allows an individual to, um, 
you know, compromise with different thoughts and belief systems that, you know, they would not have normally um, compromised with had it not been for some catastrophic event, like a, like a heroin addiction that lands you living under a highway. And Mm -hmm. my, my, you know, I, I struggle with it off and on for a lot of years. And I, I found myself at the beginning of November 2014 in a cell, in a jail cell in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I had a warrant uh, for my arrest for a DUI that I kept not going to court for because when you're in Philadelphia living under a highway, going to court for a DUI in Lancaster isn't really a, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania isn't really a priority. Mm-hmm. So I had a warrant. So I decided, hey, you know what? The only way. I could probably successfully detox at this point because mind you, over the years I've been in a lot of treatment centers and, and detoxes and, and, and places like that. And many of the end, I would just like leave um, against medical advice. And um, I couldn't get into any of those places anymore in the end for me. I had burned, so to speak. So I had this warrant and the, and the only thing I could really think of to do was to like, you know, made sense to me at the time was to go to jail for a couple of weeks. And I took myself in while in jail, I believe what I call a spiritual experience. And I think that that is one thing. Somebody like my. So we are, we are um, having, you know, Eddie, we're having again, problems with, with, um, techni- with, um, the co- connectivity. So can you repeat that again? I, I just, you mentioned that this was a spiritual experience for you. And, and by the way, Willie, if you want to jump in and ask a question, just let me know. Just, just give me the finger. But um, okay. what, um, Eddie, can you hear me? Because I think he's frozen again. Yeah. You can hear me? Am I okay. again? You said, you said yeah. that, that, that this was a spiritual experience. And um, Wayne Dyer used to say that the ego is- I edging. love Wayne Dyer edging God out. So you understand that what I'm talking about. And when, when people are in their ego, they protect that ego. That's the most important thing. Their whole life is their ego. As a matter of fact, we want to do a, I want to do a class on the ego because that's what we, that's all we know. And that's all we want to protect. And everything is personal and everything's about you. So how did that spiritual experience kill your ego? It's, it's, it's my belief it's my belief that all of my, no, I mean, a lot of my misery throughout my life, I could attribute to the ego yeah. causing, causing problems, like affecting the way I perceive things and, you know, causing misery. Of course, in the midst of that, I don't think that it's ego. I blame it on other people. You believe right? it's truth. You believe it's truth and you believe yeah. it's everybody else's fault, but you, because you have the truth, yeah. you're the holder of the truth. So with that in mind, would you share, can you share that spiritual moment, that aha moment that woke you up and said, I, I need to be about my well, essence. I need to go first, from fear to love. The first thing, the first thing that happened to me was, um, you know, I was, I was completely devastated to the point where I was on the verge of suicide. Okay. Um, and that was because I had realized what it was that I had suffered from at that point. And what I suffered from was an illness. And I believe, you know, a- a- addiction to be an illness. So what I suffered from was an illness to where the, my thought process was so damaged and affected that there was no way I was ever going to be able to stay clean on my own. Just like, just like, I'm just going to decide to be clean from here on because, you know, and I'm not saying that's not something that somebody else could accomplish. I'm talking about myself as personal, sure. you know, um, discovery. Um, and I, 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 I thought to myself like, you know, dude, when you get out of here, you're probably going to get high again, a hundred percent, because that's what your life, your whole life, you've done that very thing. Throughout my life, we're talking from, you know, I was 37 during this period. We're talking from 19 to 37. So from 19 to 37, Mm -hmm. I had, I had experienced these periods where I would just be completely devastated to the, uh, to, you know, and, 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 and I would get clean like sometimes. And, then I would go back and do it again. So my mind was like, you know, Ed, it doesn't matter how much you think you're fed up with it at this point. 
your life history has shown you shown that you're going to do it again. You're going to get high again. And um, uh, in desperation, I was willing to compromise with like my whole belief system. Like maybe there's a God. Like maybe, like maybe something beyond the realm of human power can help me. And I think that it took that devastation for that to happen. And I think it was, you know, now that I look back, it certainly wasn't wonderful at the time, but it was one of the most wonderful things that ever happened. And that was in 2014 and you've been um, sober since? Since, yeah, since. That's, that's beautiful. So, uh, go ahead. Okay. So as you're five, five years, as you, the most profound thing I think anybody has ever said that has been able to share their transformation story, Eddie, is that moment where you decided to change your belief system. Who, who told you that that belief system needed to change? Was it that you started reading? I mean, Did you read about Wayne Dreyer, Bruce Lipton? I, 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 Okay, so, so Wayne Dyer, Dox, okay, like, we're, we're like having, I, I've, go ahead. All right, are we back? All right, so, um, I have been in and out of, like, recovery for throughout my life, so I have encountered a lot of good authors, mm -hmm. and I knew about this for a long time, but the thing that I try to convey to a lot of people is, um, you know, if, if the only thing I'm doing is, you know, in, is, is reading the books and I'm filling myself up with knowledge, it's good. But if I'm not putting any of it into practical application, it's just I'm a guy who's high with spiritual knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. at least that's my, at yeah. least that's my, my experience anyway. Yeah, the, 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 toughest, the toughest step is about 12 inches. Which is from the head to the heart. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, and I think especially for uh, like people, you know, who who fancy themselves as like you know intellectuals or or people who like to read. Um, and I mean, I, cer certainly my life doesn't reflect that of an intellectual. I got a GED in rehab in 1995, but like I've always thought like. As far as like reading and all that, I always thought highly of myself. And um, well, that was because you had to protect the ego. I mean, I just thought I, I believed that that was just more ammunition for the for the ego. I mean, I'm you know, I, people use the term disease to refer to addiction or, or alcoholism. In my and this is my belief is that disease and ego are synonymous. It's the same thing. Like when I, when people say my disease, I hear my ego. That's what it's, you know, my disease is telling me to do this. You'll hear that term in like the recovery community. And I'm like, my thing is your ego, your ego is telling you to do that. So That's, what, what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is that, um, that sign that you had in front of Willie is very prophetic because the sign was really for you because we see in others who we are. So even though you were showing that sign to the world, that sound sign has turned inward to see how charitable you are with the information and the lessons that you've learned in your life. If well, now I'm, now I'm a guy who encounters people at gas stations and holding signs and, you know, I kind of have to remind myself, like, you know, and act as if, you know, show kindness to that individual as if they were an angel. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I know it sounds, it may to some people seem kind of hokey, but. No, um, no, we don't know. We don't know. There was a song that um, was very similar to your sign. that says, what if God was one of us? Yeah, I remember. You know, you know a homeless or, and it gives different scenarios and talking about, and there was a book called, what would Jesus do? And so there was a whole community and a bracelet and all these things and people are become aware of it. But then the feeling dwindles, the, the essence goes away and the ego takes over. So here, here, go ahead. 
and, 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 and like, and, and that's the thing, you know, when I talk to other people who are, um, you know, just getting sober or whatever. And I, I, you know, I talk to, I like, we talk about the resilience of the ego and how it's important. You know what I mean? Like, like there's, 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 like there's meditation in my life. There's, there's, there's prayer meditation in my life. I get up every morning and I do like a, like a prayer meditation exercise. There's spiritual exercises that are necessary for me, um, you know, to help deal with the ego. Cause it's, 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 it's a, it's a resilient part of us. And it tries to, I don't know, like, like I, 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 it tries to cause problems in my life. The, the difference between now and throughout most of my life is I didn't realize that that was the deal. I didn't know that that was what was causing discomfort for me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. Um, but now I do. I always tell this story all the time. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's a, it, it's something that when I really, when I really picked up on this, I saw how ego had been affecting my whole life. When I was like 19 or 20, I used to go to this place. Um, it was like a shelter when the addiction would get real bad and I had nowhere to go. I would go to the shelter all the time down in um, the neighborhood that I grew up in. And, you know, the, the conditions there were kind of beat up. They would, you know, you drank, they, they gave you like tap water. Um, they, uh, you know, a bologna sandwich to bologna in, in, uh, with, uh, in between two pieces of bread. And when I would first come in off the street, I was highly grateful for them allowing me to stay in you know, this place. That was and your essence. That was your that essence. Was, that, my ego had been demolished by, uh, the, the, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the addiction, by, you know, coming right in off what they call a run, it would be demolished. And I would come in and I would be so super grateful for the food. Two weeks in, same situation, I would start complaining. Are you serious? Tap water in a coffee cup? You know, bologna sandwich. <laughs> you can't even give me a, a condiment. I can't get any mayonnaise with this. And I always, <laughs> I always say all the time, like, what's the difference between those situations? Um, I, I outwardly or the exterior, they were identical. The difference was one had ego in it, and the other one didn't. Yeah. And I look at that, and I'm like, well, it's been trying to make life very uncomfortable for me for as long as I can remember, and for for a guy like me mm -hmm. shooting shooting heroin and and cocaine is very comfortable like it, it i i and once my life becomes so uncomfortable i start compromising with myself as to why i could probably get away with doing the thing that has always made me comfortable so the dilemma became like how do i learn to feel comfortable in this world that I've never felt comfortable in without having to use IV drugs. And the answer to that for myself was, you know, spiritual, uh, you know, a spiritual solution that dealt with the ego. Okay. So as you are, and thank you so much for sharing that transformation and that awareness, but here you are in jail, you're serving time. Your mom, as I understand, Took you to jail or took you out of jail? Which one? Yeah, she took me to jail. Um, I I was in um, you know, my mom my mom has been, you know, obviously um, you know, worried well, is an understatement. Um, but she was always like there, like when I would reach out to her and say, "Mom, I would try to get into a treatment center, um, or whatever." She would she would be available for rides or whatever. Um, you know, I had long outgrown my um you know her giving me money she wasn't giving me any money anymore yeah. but she would help out with a ride or or um you know if i needed some financial assistance getting in somewhere that required an intake fee of some sort then she would be okay you know she would help provide that but um she uh you know i, I called her and i said mom I'm, um if you come and pick me up where i'm at i'll go to jail and she said okay I'll be, I'll be right. I'll be there tomorrow. And she, she drove and drove me, you know, about two hours from, you know, to where I had the warrant and took me to jail. My mom, um, you know, has always been, you know, 
She's always she's always hoped that the day would come when her son would kind of like Yeah, you you have to you you as moms, we hold our children to our highest level and 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 yeah. hope that that's what happens. So, when you're now how long were you in in, in jail? I was only in jail for 2 weeks. I wasn't looking I'm not really like a <laughs> I, I mean, I got a lot of friends that, 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 um, you know, that are clean and, and some not that, that are, um, no stranger to doing, you know, like time, but I'm not like a big jail guy. <laughs> and, um, you know, I've managed, I've managed to skate through a 20 some year heroin addiction without having much of a record, which is kind of a miracle in and of or, itself. Uh, or I don't, I don't notice a neurological disorder either. That's, yeah. it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Yeah. No, so, I know. I mean, so, so then when you come out, now you're coming out of your comfort zone, you know, how do you, how do you rehab yourself in your life? Because you have these habits and patterns that get you back. And you know, that if I continue with the ego, I'm going to go back to feeding the ego and the ego, there is no satisfaction with the ego. And yeah. so now I, you have to be it, responsible. Um, the ego's, yeah. I mean, what happened? I mean, the ego satisfaction is material, right? Um, I need, I need, I need. And my experience was that, um, you know, so most of the other times that I gotten clean, I, I had, you know, scrambled to get my stuff back. Like that was my quest. Like I got to get my job back. I've got to get my girlfriend back. I got to get, you know, this situation is straightened out with my license. Not that those things are, I always tell people, not that those things are inherently bad things. They're just not treatment for the addiction. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're not treatment. Like, they're just like, you know, like, I mean, and it's logical to think that, that, that they are. Like, you know, you run into somebody who had a vicious drug addiction. You ask them how they're doing and they say, oh, I'm doing pretty good. I got a job. I got my girlfriend back. I moved back in and I'm working 80 hours, you know, a week. And you think, oh, you're doing great. And I think to myself, well, what are you doing about your internal condition? Mm. You know what I mean? Because that's that that to me, because if you're not doing anything about that, you're not doing anything at all as mm. far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, you know, the, the, the whole uh, hold on. <laughs> and, and the whole I, I love the how whole, you, go ahead. The whole experience kind of like, um, you know, propelled me the experience propelled me to kind of um, compromise like with my, with my belief system. And it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, man. Like, you know, um, for an adult to say, Hey, you know what? Maybe everything I thought about most things has been wrong. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Most, That's huge. there's a, there's That's a huge. lot of, people, there's a lot of people I've encountered that that to me seem like they would rather die than, than make that like even consider that. Well, you know, you know, the four questions you need to ask, you can ask yourself to know if you're in your ego, right? It's like, oh, this, this is what the, if, if you are feeling um, discomfort or whatever, the four questions you need to ask to find out the pulse of whether or not you're in your ego is, is I'm, am, am, am I comfortable? It's like you, you want to be comfortable. You want to, yeah. the ego wants to be comfortable. The ego wants to be right. The ego wants to look good and in control. So if you are experiencing any of those four things, chances are you're in your ego. It's ego related. So, yeah. I so what I did was I I got out. Um, you know, I got out of uh, out of jail. I was only in there for a couple of weeks, but while I was in there, um, you know, I I I said I said to myself like, you know, um, you know, I I reached a level of desperation and I cried out like in like a prayer in my heart. I said, God enter my heart, make me another, make me a different person. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Now I'm in no way, shape or form like a super religious person. Um, but spirituality is so important that people. So it's super that. important. And I'm, you know, I'm of the opinion that like people could take, um, you know, different paths to get there. When I, when I was released from jail, I was in, I was in a Christian program for a few months and, you know, and, and I thrived there like spiritually, like I'm not, you know what I mean? But I, but, but anybody I encounter, um, who chooses to take a, a different spiritual path, I'm like, do it. Like you got to do something though. It's I, I believe 
I believe one in that condition has to do something spiritually um, in order to combat the ego, which to me is the chief cause selfishness, is the chief cause of the addiction. It's a very selfish illness. Um, you know, I'm talking about my, you know, me, my experience is that like, you know, the way that I lived for a long time, I have two children, um, which by the way, I want to mention, you know, my son lives with me. My son, I have, I, you know, I have a home now. My son lives with me as he, he has, you know, um, mental illness and, um, my daughter is getting married in, in two weeks. And well, these are beautiful, you know, gifts that my sobriety has allowed me, has afforded me. Mm -hmm. And but, but I know, I know, despite the fact that all these good things are happening around me, um, you know, where I'm at spiritually has continued to be just important now, you know, with them, with material things in my life. I was able, you know, I, I have a pretty lucrative job now, and I've been able to, um, you know, to acquire some things material um you know, material wise, but like spiritual, where I'm at spiritually is the most important thing in my life. Because I know now that it doesn't matter what's going on around me. If I'm not right internally, I'm not right. And I, dis awesome. I discovered that when I was in the program, when, they, when, I, when I got released from jail, I had nothing. I had, I had clothes that were donated. I didn't have a car. My license was suspended for two years. I took the bus everywhere. Uh, when I had to come to Philly to visit my kids, I had to take the train. I used to go to the supermarket with one of those laundry carts uh, in, on foot, and I was happy. You know what I mean? Um, what, I, what I realized at that point in my life was that my happiness is not really contingent on what's going on around me. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's more or less where I'm at internally. And... For, 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 for the majority of my life that I allowed my happiness to be contingent on what was going on around me, my happiness was like, you know, uh, flimsy, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was temporary. It, it was only, it, it, you know, so. Yeah, Willie, is there any, would you like to, you know, you've been listening to Eddie, I'm sure you've had these conversations before. Is there anything that, that he shared today that you wanna like highlight? Um, I love listening to Eddie talk. Um, he and I now have uh, been friends, pretty solid friends for um, several years. We've done a number of events together and uh, been on panels together. We did a TEDx talk together. Yeah. And, you know, for me, when I hear this story, and I do know a lot of the details of this story, what strikes me is how uh, wise Eddie is and how when I met him in 2014, he had scabs all over his face. You know, yeah. he, he was in a rough place. He was probably 30, 40 pounds lighter than he is now. And even through all of that, there was something about his spirit uh, that I connected to. And so it's, um, to me, it's just incredibly rewarding to have had this relationship. And I have this feeling that we'll be doing a lot of stuff together for a long time yeah. uh, i mean look at credit. look at the yeah look at how you're you were able to step out of fear and embrace love <clears throat> and so that's the only way that you were able to get out of your ego your comfort zone your you know your old you know um belief system of what homelessness was about and within your own homelessness in your spirit and so those are all things and how they, it all connects. But I, I do want to, I, I do want to say that, you know, even when we think that our spirit is crushed, that's a limiting belief. Our spirit can never be crushed. We might think it's crushed when we view it through the eyes of an ego, but our spirit is never, our spirit is uncrushable. And I mean, if, if, if Eddie isn't proof that our spirit is uncrushable, I, I can't imagine what else. So, so, so you're now, you're gainfully employed. You have your son who is going through a very similar path that you have gone through. Well, he's, he's similar in the respect that like, you know, he has, 
um, an illness that, you know, makes me concerned for him greatly as a parent, not, not drugs. Um, okay. he's, schizo- he's schizophrenic. Okay. And, um, you know, Eddie, 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 Eddie lives with me and I take care of him. And, I mean, in many ways, he's much like an, an, an adult in the respect that re- very recently I, you know, he got his driver's license. I was able to give him my old car. Um, and I'm, you know, and he drives back and forth to work as a job and he goes to counseling. Um, but little things like I have to help him. With. Remind me to, after we are done with the class, I want to share with you some information that I've learned from, you know, Dr. Bill Walsh, Dr. Um, Kelly Brogan, Dr. Lee. Um, uh, Lee, uh, Dr. Lee, Dr. Alice Lee, um, Dr. Albert Mensa about schizophrenia and the deficiencies in the brain. So I'll, I'll talk to you about that, or you can watch the, the classroom. And so before, because we're, we're coming down on time and I just want to acknowledge my sponsors really quickly, you know, Eddie, um, you know, he talks about, and he's mentioned several times, you know, that, that support, that support that he's felt with his mom you know, whether it was that moment where he was talking with Willie. And I'm sure, Willie, that you've received just as much from Eddie as he has received from you. And that's, that's the importance of a relationship that gives and takes, not just gives, but gives yeah. and receives. And so I, I want to acknowledge my sponsors for standing up with this classroom that we normally would not see uh, all this information that's being shared today on television or or whatever. So I want to say thank you to my sponsors like Liberty HealthShare, Keep Me Safe Organics, um, um, that you can get products that are toxin and chemical free on your body and you get discounts with all this. First Alternative Care, where you get 24-7 medical, um, non-urgent care, dermatology, family practice, and um, and three hours a, a year of behavioral health counseling for the entire household for $45. And Dr. Stephen Grable, who is the complimentary care, he's on once a month talking about alternative ways to heal our body. The pharmacy in Merritt Island mentioned my name and you get um, 20% off your first order. Live Longer Medical, that's helping people uh, become beautiful from the inside out. And of course, you, the enrolled student, that you can help me out as well. You know, we're all in this together. We're all learning and growing at whenyouneedafriend.com. So I wanna encourage you to to subscribe at whenyouneedafriend.com. If you haven't done so, please do so. Um, Also, while you're there, check out all my social media, like, follow, and so that we can continue this conversation that will help us heal and go into that uh, maturity of essence within us. And so while you're there, again, go to my sponsors page, look at all my sponsors, figure out ways that you can support them the way that as they are supporting the classroom. And of course, you, um, the enrolled student, if you become an enrolled student, you can help out financially as well so that we can continue growing the show. So let's all continue to grow together so that we can identify our ego. Because it doesn't matter how much work you've done on yourself or how much, you know, you know, whether I'm a life coach or a psychiatrist or someone who's highly evolved, we are constantly learning and growing every day. And so I want to encourage you to continue to grow with the classroom. And so I want to thank Willie and Eddie for sharing their story today of going from fear to love. Because honestly, um, I, I, I want to ask you, Eddie, when you took that step from that self-loathing ego that had to be right, look good, be comfortable, and in control, when you took that ego and you said, I am stepping, I am, I am stepping away from you and I'm moving towards my essence, which is all about love, that step right there, do you t- did you take it like in 2014 and didn't revisit it or do you revisit it there? No. Uh, no, it, 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 um, my whole life has changed as a result of it because I bring it into just about every facet of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I work in a very competitive field, like the job that I do. What do you do have, now? Can you say what you I'm do? A, I'm, a, I'm a public insurance adjuster, but there's others out here in Philly, and, and some of them are very aggressive with one another. Um, they slander one another. Like it's, 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 um, it can Doggy be, dog. um, yeah. Yeah. And, and I have, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who has a good relationship with my competitors and I live by the, um, and I've never, I want to, I want to say I've never lived like this before, but like I live by like, I want for all people what I would want for myself. And I think if you have that in your heart, you're happy. And, mm-hmm. and, as a result, I, you know, I don't, I very rarely bump heads with, with other people that do the same thing that I do. And, um, I, and I'm, and I'm successful. I've been successful with it. Uh, so that philosophy, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like my whole ego driven life, um, you know, was if you cross me, I'm going to cross you. If you're out to hurt me, I'm going to hurt you and I'm going to get vengeance and I'm going to make you, you know, remember who I like all that nonsense that like, you know, that, 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 that's, that I live by like most of my life. So I, I took that concept and I've grown with it since. And I think that that is the only reason that I'm sober. Mm -hmm. Like that's like the connection. I've had, I build a connection, you know, with my creator and I, I ask, you know what I mean? Like, like, um, you know, my, I asked God to help me, you know, have love in my heart for other people. And, and I struggle with it some days, like, you know, sure, especially, you're human. In tra- especially in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I, but for the most part, like I'm a pretty happy person because, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to sit down and think to yourself, like, you know, like at this moment, I'm sitting in this moment right now, and there really, there, there, there literally isn't anyone I'm mad at, or, or, or one, or one harm to come to, or, or anything like that. Like, you know, so yeah, I mean, the whole that whole thing, I took it and I and I ran with it, and you know, I, I, I try my best to incorporate it in my life. Um, you know, I fail sometimes, but like. I could I could I could say that as as each year has gone by, I've become better with some things than I was the year prior, and I think that that's important. Um, but again, I think the most important thing, and I think you mentioned this, is um, the effect I had on other people. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the effect I had on other people is the most important thing that you know. It, it's the only thing that people, I believe, are going to remember us by. Yeah. And, and Eddie, there is uh, four questions of responsibility is the four, you know, to take ownership from going from victim, which is the song of the ego is the victim mentality to the empowered essence, responsible individual. And I would love to, to go through those four questions with you later on after we finish the podcast so that you, so that you can see, cause I've, I've, I, I, whenever I find myself in discontentment, I always ask myself these four responsibility questions and I, and I, and I choose it for myself. You said this at the beginning of the class. If I had to choose this all over again, I, I would do it because of oh, the no lessons that you have learned along the way. I, I, I joke and say this all the time, but it's the truth. If I started my life all over again, the only thing I would really do different is take care of my teeth better. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's brilliant. <laughs> I, I, I think that's fair. That's fair. Okay. So be, because we, we have about five minutes left on the podcast and then we'll, we'll get to have like maybe our little quiet time afterwards. But um, if there's somebody who's sitting or watching you today, or maybe later on on YouTube or years down the road and they're facing eviction, homelessness, addiction, what kind of words of hope can you give that individual, can you speak to someone who was in your, can you speak to you when you were 19 years old and share it out loud? I, I, I mean, I would, I would say that, um, you know, sp- a, a spiritual solution and, you know, thinking of others, you know what I mean? Through that spiritual solution is, is the answer to all problems. You know what I mean? Like I, I, 
I believe that. I believe that, you know, I used to say, you know, like some kind of spiritual connection is, was important for me. Now, I think it's, it's the most important thing, like period, you know? Um, so, I mean, I, 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 that's, that's what I would impart to somebody in my position. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, to explore their know, spirit. Like, like, to explore like their to spirit. Explore, to, yeah, to explore their spirit. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I was at the depth of hell <laughs> and, and, and I really didn't think I was going to be able to get out of that. And, you know, what I did was I, I sought the assistance of, 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 of God, of a higher power. Like, and, and that's what I did. I, I sought the assistance of a higher power, but my prayer different than most of the times in my life that I've been in that situation wasn't do this for me, do this for me, get rid of this uh, for me. It was change me so I could be a better person and I'll do whatever it is you want me to do. We'll and do I think that that's, yeah. I think that that's, that's, you know, my life started to change from that point on when that happens. So that's beautiful. Um, Willie, uh, of course, for those of you who want to look at the work that um, Willie is doing, he's got a documentary, the documentary we talked about, it's, um, it's the documentary called Signs of Humanity. But you can also go see Willie's um, website at weareallhomeless.org. So I want to share that with you. I and, also I want to share with yeah. you that Signs of Humanity is now now available on, on Amazon dot Prime. On Amazon Prime. Amazon yep. Prime. What about Netflix? Is it on Netflix yet? Not on Netflix. Not, not yet. I looked. I looked <laughs> it's, not, it's not on Netflix yet. Well, you know, this is, this is um, also, the, uh, for those of you who are tuning in later on, I, I want to make an announcement. There's an iridology Iredo conference, October 18th through 21st, which is this weekend coming up. And if you want to go as um, the public, it's a free entrance. I want to encourage you. It's in Orlando. Um, if you want to learn more about it, reach out to me. But um, I want to sh go shift back to Willie. What advice do you give people? to get out of their comfort zone and embrace, get out of their fear and embrace love? Well, the big takeaway that I've had in doing this work for all these years is, is really around the ability to see other people as human beings. Um, hence the title of the documentary, Signs of Humanity. Um, for me, it's just about, you know, it's human nature to want to judge other people. Mm -hmm. And when I'm on the street, I see somebody, I try to slow down enough so that I can say, hey, find out their name, see their eyes, shake their hand, and hear whatever the real story is. That's how I got to know Eddie. And, it, you know, it's, for me, it's just a way that I can stay grounded and grateful as I, uh, you know, deal with all the questions that I still have. I, I, I think it's wonderful. I think uh, when I first met you in 2015, Willie, you gave me permission gave me permission to look at the homeless in a different way. And now I have water in my car. So, if, you know, if you do whatever it takes, you know, to, to help humanity, you know, whichever way you can. Some people feel comfortable with money. Some people feel comfortable giving water. So I'm, I'm, uh, really, you always in, encourage me every time. And Eddie, thank you so much for joining thank today. You. We're going to continue the conversation. For those of you who want to join us, you can join us on Facebook Live at Lillian's Radio Show. Please remember, we'll be right here waiting for you. This is Lillian McDermott, Eddie Dunn, and Willie Baronet wishing you love, peace, joy, and unexpected abundance. Make it the best day ever! Our opinions and advice expressed Yay. on the Lillian McDermott Radio Show are intended for the individual callers and guests on the program and are presented to our wider audience solely for general educational purposes. Please act responsibly and consult personally with your own medical, psychological, or nutritional expert before taking any steps to improve your life. So, Eddie, are you up for the challenge? I wanted to, to ask you four questions of taking ownership and responsibility for your life. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, and I don't mean to put, you can say no. We can put, I don't mm -hmm. want to put you on the spot. So, so there are four questions that whenever anyone is being victimized, no matter what it is, whether it's a real victimization where you're a child and you were molested as a child and now you're an adult and we need to let that go. Like you were saying, at this moment, I am not angry with anybody. You know, yeah. it's like at this moment, we are adults. What happened in the past, your addiction or whatever, none of that matters anymore. And so, and, and, 
And of course, many of us don't want to face it. We're ashamed of it. And we don't want to even go in that direction. So we carry the shame, blame, fault, and duty, which we call responsibility, but that's not the same word in, in that I use in the classroom. So responsibility is about empowerment and freedom. And mm -hmm. so if I were to say to you, let, let's answer these four questions of responsibility without blame, shame, fault, or duty. It is what it is. Two plus yeah. two equals four. Okay. So the first question in taking ownership for your life or responsibility is by answering, how did I create it? So like, for example, with me, you know, um, it, it might be, I was, bo I was born in the family or, or I was, you know, whatever it is. But if you were to say, how did you create, how are you responsible? How did you create your addiction? How did I create it? Um, I always, okay, so it's, it's interesting because I used to think, I thought at one point in my life that my environment, like I mentioned, I, I mentioned that like I grew up in a, um, in the neighborhood that I grew up in and, mm -hmm. you know, there was a, some dysfunction going on around me, but I, there was also good things that I've experienced. And I think my perception has created my addiction like great like, great my, answer my, my great perception answer. my perception created it um mm -hmm. I, I i tell this story all the time too the first time i was ever in some kind of treatment setting they were like okay um okay mr dunn we want you to tell your story to the community tomorrow so i wrote it down in a notebook and i wrote this horror story of like you know that i came from poverty and like people didn't do enough for me and I look, your victim story. Now, your victim I, look back, story. I look back at that now and I'm like, that was nonsense because, you know, it was the way I perceived that situation. The truth is my parents, um, you know, did, I didn't want for anything. Like, you know, I, I didn't look at any of that though. Um, you know, I went to Disney world when I was 10. Like I didn't put any of that stuff in that thing I wrote. Well, um, it's, it was it's all, a, it's amazing. it was all awful. It, it's it, your perception. I love how you created it was with your perception because your story of victim and your story of empowered are both true, yeah. right? But yeah. which story are you going to tell? Okay. So the second question, oh, we lost Eddie. Okay. So Eddie, I don't know if you can hear me. So the qu second question is what are the gifts and lessons? Well, I mean, the, the gifts are, the gifts are, I don't, I'm not, motivated i'm not consumed with fear any longer that's a gift yeah um like my whole life i've been consumed like with fear and i don't know about anybody else but like you know whenever i am whenever i'm doing drugs um when i'm getting when i'm high and i'm not afraid i don't feel i'm numb so uh i don't i don't i'm not consumed with fear and the, the i mean the lessons are exactly you know what I talked about about how yeah, you, you've the been most talking. important the most important thing in life is you know how I affected other people. I tell all the guys. I mean, unfortunately, um, you know, my life brings me like in, encounter. Uh, I encounter people with an it, it, with a, uh, an opioid addiction, and it's killing a lot of people. Yeah. And I talk about how like, like, you know, dude, I say like, um, you know, when, when people are at someone's funeral, they're never talking about how much money they made. They're never saying, wow, did you hear, man? He put in, he put in a 70 hour work week. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're never talking about like, a, a, about things like that. They're always talking about how the individual affected other people. I was just unfortunately out of good friends funeral very recently. And you know, when people got up and talked about him, they were talking about how he affected them. His essence. You know what I mean? His essence. Yeah. So That's you've it. been talking throughout the whole entire uh, class about your gifts and lessons. So um, we'll, the, the next question, so we'll, we'll move on to the third question. And I mm -hmm. just want to, I want to go through these kind of rapidly because I, I know that sometimes we co complicate things and it's just from getting from point A to point B. And so yeah. the next question is, what's going to be different? So what's going to be different? Now that you know how you created it and the gifts and lessons, what's going to be different? Well, 
<laughs> I think this, this, th there you go. Uh, no, oh. you're muted. You're muted, Eddie. Go ahead. Repeat what there you There we go. There we go. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. The, um, what's going to be, the, uh, what's going to be different is what was different for me is I began to live a life where I made my internal condition more important than what was going on around me. Beautiful. That, that's, that's what I did. That's Beautiful. what I did. And by doing that, my, my exterior has changed, uh, you know, better than it's ever been. Very good. Very good. And the fourth question, if you're really evolved and you want to get to that next question where this is your choice. So now that you know how you created it, what are mm -hmm. the gifts and lessons? What's going to be different? The fourth question of taking ownership is, how am I going to use my experience for the greater good? You're doing well, it. Well, what, what I do is, I, like I said, I try to impart these things on to other people that experience the same thing that I did. Mm -hmm. So, I that's, mean, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and, and sometimes, and, and look, at the, look at the experience that you have as a drug counselor or as someone to help the homeless. And all, look at all the, the, the tools that you've been given because you've lived it. Yeah, yep. You know, it's like, you're not talking from a degree. You're, you know, you can relate to- Experience. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, it's yeah, on the job training, buddy. Yep, yep, no doubt. This is on the job. Thank you so much for answering Thank those you. questions because the, the, this is what we do. We, we don't want to look at it because we're so ashamed of our past that it, when we do that, that becomes a part of a new illness. It's, yep. It becomes part of a new illness. And if we would just embrace it and say, hey, it was a part of my life. These, you know, this is what I went through this so that I can help you now. Mm -hmm. So I can yeah, help my I mean, son get I'm, through. I, like I said, I'm grateful for all those things that I've been through, um, you know, because they allowed me the ability to have that effect on other people. So, yes. Well, I, I, I absolutely have loved this conversation. I, this is like, thank you. This is like an implosion, you know, mm -hmm. having Eddie come on today to the classroom was like an implosion, you know, it's like we had so many technical difficulties and all of that, but you know what, we can look at all the interruptions or, and that's all ego. We can look at all the other stuff that just wasn't perfect or flawless, or we can say, wow, we learned so much from Eddie Dunn today. Well done, Eddie Dunn. Thank you. Thank you. This is, this is, uh, yeah, I, I know that you've done other interviews before, but this is my first time meeting you and we had zero time for prep. And so I just, I just want to acknowledge you that, and this is what I see, because I see, I, I had a gift growing up that I was ashamed of, and I mm -hmm. could see through people. I could mm -hmm. see through the ego into the spirit of the person. And what I see in you is a huge empathic person who was feeling so much from the universe, and you didn't know how to process it. Yeah. And because you gave up the ego and you said, I want to be in my essence. Now, through the essence, you're able to interpret all these um, downloads that God of the universe was giving you. And that's True. what I see in you. And, and I also see that um, everything that you've gone through, and this is the difference between the, the saints and sinners. You know, we're all, mm -hmm. we're all the same, but the saints okay. keep getting up. The saints keep going, you know. And so that's, I just want to acknowledge you that, um, that you didn't give up on your spirit. And even when you felt that you, there was the lowest that you've ever been, your spirit knew. And Romans 8, it, even if you can't pray, your spirit recognizes the groaning within yeah. you. That's the language of our essence. And, um, and you were able to actualize what was in you all along because you were able to step out of your ego. And mm -hmm. the greatest lesson here that I've picked up from you is how important it is for us to do an ego check. Yeah. yeah. And again, the ego wants to look good, be comfortable, be right and in control. All of that 
is an illusion. It's yeah. an illusion. It definitely is. So I want to thank you, Eddie, for sharing your essence with us. And uh, Willie, I want to thank you for um, stepping out of your fear and finding comfort and expanding your comfortable com comfort zone within the homeless um, area in the in the home with the homeless people. It's is there totally, any? It's transformed uh, every aspect of my life. And I'm grateful every day as a result. Very good. Anything you'd like to add, Willie, to, to our conversation? Uh, Eddie, I want to say thank you once again. Thank man. you. We have done this uh, uh, a number of times, and um, I just always am grateful to spend time with you. Um, I know there's big things ahead of us. I got a thing to tell you about soon uh, 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 in Philly. So hang okay. tight. There'll be more. All right. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Good. Okay, so for those of you who um, have been part or are going to be watching this later on, please um, share, like us, make your comments, because it is so important to work together for the greater good to expand this classroom so that more people have access to it. So thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. for, Take care. So wonderful for, for being here today. So we're going to say goodbye now to our Facebook friends and our YouTube friends. So say goodbye now. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. See you later. Let me get the recording for it. Thank you, Willie. All right. I'm trying to get the recording and it won't. I hear a cat meowing. <laughs>